Shabbat Shalom. This week's sermon is sponsored by Dorothy and Herb Fox in loving memory of Herb's dear brother, Ivan Fox. This week's Parsha is Ki Tetze. The last time I gave a Devar Torah on this Parsha was at my own bat mitzvah more than 30 years ago. There are definitely differences between how almost 13-year-old Lauren and the Lauren today, who is definitely no longer a teenager, approached the Devar Torah. 30 years ago, I wrote my bat mitzvah speech on my family's new Apple IIc computer and printed it on the Epson dot matrix printer, where I then needed to remove the side perforated circles if people remember those. That Lauren definitely could not have conceived that my next Devar Torah on Ki Tetze would be delivered virtually via an email sent to all members of the shul to be accessed on iPhones, iPads, and laptops. As a middle schooler, I remember being struck by Ki Tetze's odd combination of laws and rules, which seemed to have no obvious connection to modern day, much less to a suburban teenager preparing for her bat mitzvah. And I must admit that I had a similar reaction when I first looked at the Parsha to prepare this drash. Ki Tetze is the 49th Parsha in the Torah, and we are nearing the end of the Torah. With just a few Parshot remaining, there is an element to this Parsha that feels like Moses has realized that he has many commandments left to impart, so he rushes to throw them all into this Parsha. I admit that when I drop off my children, I am often squeezing to throw out reminders as they try to get out of the car. Don't forget to text me the time to pick you up. Be careful! Did you remember sunscreen? Should we view this Parsha's litany of seemingly disconnected commandments in this light? Indeed, this Parsha has 74 of the Torah's 613 commandments in it, more than any other Parsha in the Torah. It has commandments on subjects as diverse as the laws of the beautiful captive, inheritance rights of the firstborn, burial and dignity of the dead, sending away the mother bird before taking her young, and the duty to erect a safety fence around the roof of one's home. It lays out the judicial procedures and penalties for adultery, for the rape or seduction of an unmarried girl, and for a husband who falsely accuses his wife of infidelity. And it details the procedures for the marriage of the wife of a deceased childless brother and the procedures in case that the brother-in-law does not wish to marry her. And let me reassure you, don't worry, even my tech-savvy teenagers won't be able to help me upload a video of the length necessary to delve into all 74 of these commandments. Instead, I plan to focus on just three. The Parsha begins with the following discussion. When you go out to war against your enemies and the Lord your God delivers them into your power and you take some of them captive and you see among them a, the captives a beautiful woman and you desire her and would take her to be wife, you shall bring her into your house and she shall trim her hair, pare her nails and discard her captive's garb. And she shall stay in your house and weep for her father and her mother for a full month. What do we make of this? Devarim begins, these are the words which Moses spoke to all Israel. We're standing together, waiting to cross into the promised land. Moses doesn't deliver this commandment only to a gathering of warrior men who might capture a beautiful woman. Moses gave this commandment to all the people of Israel. So this commandment, like all the others, must have meaning and relevance to me. A deeper look at this provision shows that God is providing the Jews with laws about justice, fairness, responsibility, and most of all, kindness. This commandment ensures that the newly captive woman has time to mourn and time to experience a transition from her old existence to this new captivity. It ensures that the captors treat others with respect and dignity, notwithstanding the circumstances that put them in the position of captors. That sense of kindness, fairness, and responsibility is woven throughout the 74 commandments in this Parsha. To me, one of the most poignant parts of the Parsha addresses what to do if you see your brother's ox or sheep. The first part is self-evident. If you see your brother's ox or sheep straying, you shall return them to your brother. The Parsha goes on to expand this, emphasizing that even if your brother is not near you, or if you do not know him, you shall not ignore the lost sheep or ox, but instead must take it to your home until you can return it to its owner. Here the Parsha goes far beyond the basic requirement of kindness. Here the Parsha is instructing us that we must be aware of those who may need our assistance. We cannot innocently or deliberately ignore that need. And this duty to notice those who may need our help and then provide it extends, yes, to our brother, but also to our brother even if we do not know him. Thus, the Parsha is, is identifying our entire community as our kin and making us responsible to pay attention to them all. The last part of the Parsha I'd like to quote confirms this idea that, quote, our brother extends to a far wider reach than just our little, literal brother or close community. 
The Parsha states, quote, You shall not despise an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not despise an Egyptian, for you were a sojourner in his land. So here we are, in August 2020, a period which can only be described as incredibly difficult and challenging. The commandments I have just read from Kitetse and the others in this Parsha all point to the importance of community, a community where we deliberately focus on one another, where we think about the needs of all members of the community, regardless of where they come from and who they are. We are struggling at this time, six months into COVID, and as we get ready for the end of the summer, the start of a new school year, and the high holidays. In this time, I, and I believe many of us, feel more insular, more focused on our own homes and our immediate families, which is natural given the physical separation and distancing. It can be hard to feel connected to the Bethel community when we haven't schmoozed at Kiddush lunch in many months, much less to feel that connection to the larger community when we are out less and see less of others. It takes more effort to actually see and understand how all our brothers are doing in this virtual and physically distanced time. It is easy to ignore our brothers' lost sheep and ox. It is harder to focus on them and to see them and take care of them. Similarly, as we go about our daily work, it is easy to assume that everyone is experiencing this time in whatever way that we are personally experiencing it. To me, the commandment of how to treat the girls captured by soldiers is a reminder that we need to think about how others are experiencing this time and to give them the space for those emotions, even if their experience is completely different in terms of particular circumstances or the response to them than our own. And that this applies to everyone we encounter. If it applies to the girl captured by victorious soldiers, then surely it applies to everyone in our community. I am so proud in this moment our, that our Bethel community has created virtual shared experiences from a re-envisioned Zoom Kabbalat Shabbat service, who even knew that could be a thing, to lunch in the virtual den, to a drive-in chauffeur blowing. Finally, at this time, when a country is so divided in so many ways, the very real discussion about Edomites and Egyptians and the Jewish people's relationship to them is a reminder that these rules about responsibility, kindness, and fairness apply to everyone. The 74 commandments of Ki Tetze, along with the other commandments of the Torah, help us to order our lives. They guide us and they help us to think about how to be as an individual and how our community wants to be as a people. The high holidays, the start of a new school year, and the anniversary of my becoming a bat mitzvah all mark the passage of time and are always times of introspection for me. What kind of person do I want to be? What is important to me? How do I better incorporate this into my daily actions and small gestures and big decisions? When I spoke about Ki Tetze as a bat mitzvah girl becoming a Jewish adult, I did not know that when I next gave a drash on Ki Tetze, I would be living in Larchmont, serving as an officer of Bethel, working as a lawyer, married to my college sweetheart, and the mother of two teenagers who love to bike, rock climb, and kayak. But as I entered Jewish adulthood and studied Ki Tetze, I did aspire to live up to the ideals of kindness, thoughtfulness, compassion, and equality that permeate the commandments of the Parsha. Those principles are as relevant as guideposts for us as individuals and as a community in 2020 as they were to the Jewish people preparing at last to enter the Promised Land. Shabbat Shalom.